Good morning. I want to welcome you all that are out there online. Uh, glad that you're able to uh, join us and worship with us and participate uh, and from the comfort of your own home. Uh, so it's so good that we're still able to uh, just worship together, even though it, it is virtually. Uh, but it's still good that we're able to worship the one and only true God. Uh, and uh, it's, I'm so thankful that we have the capability uh, to stream the way we do. And I just really want to I want to thank those. There's there's three in the back there that take care of, of all this. So I want to thank Earl, my dad, and Derek as they're all back there doing the tech stuff. Uh, so thank you for that. And uh, let's go ahead and prepare to worship this morning. Uh, I'd like to just start us, open us up with prayer together, and then we'll be lifting our voices in, in praise. So let's pray. Father God, Lord, we do give you praise this morning. Father, knowing that you alone are God. Father, you made us, and I'm so thankful that you gave your son to die for our sins and to conquer death by raising him again, and that today we worship a risen Savior. Father, thank you. Bless this time together in Jesus' name. Amen. into the Holy of Holies and have that one-to-one -one relationship with God. Take me past the outer courts into the holy place past the brazen 
rising altar Lord, I want to see your face Pass me by the crowds of people The priests to sing your praise I hunger and thirst for your righteousness But it's only found one place Take me into the holy of holy To the holy place, past the brazen altar, Lord, I want to see your face. Pass me by the crowds of people, the priests to sing your praise. I hunger and thirst for your righteousness, but it's only found one place. Take me into the holy of holy. neighbor on the couch and say good morning. The priests who sing your praise I hunger and thirst for your righteousness But it's only found one place Take me into the holy of holies Take me in by the blood of the Lamb Take me into the holy of holies Take the cold, touch my lips here I am. Take me into the holy of holies. Take me in by the blood of the Lamb. Take me into the holy of holies. Take the cold, touch my lips. Here I am. Take the cold, touch my lips. sins and griefs to bear. What a privilege to carry everything to God in prayer. Oh, what peace we often forfeit. Oh, what needless pain we bear. Oh, because we do not care. in prayer. 
each and every week we do take the time to gather around the Lord's table, remember what Christ did on Calvary. So as we prepare for the Lord's Supper this morning, let's be singing, There is Power in the Blood. Morning. Morning. And that walk's why when Emily's not there, you don't see me doing meditation or serving. That's a long walk after the song. <laughs> I made the comment the other day to my parents that this whole COVID-19 situation feels like a weather delay at a sporting event. If you've ever been there, you have that flash of lightning, and now you set the 30-minute wait timer. And Right now, we haven't gone very long into that 30 minutes before we see another flash of lightning and our 30-minute wait resets. Because a common statement I've heard from my principal and you know on the news is, as of right now or at this moment, this is a very fluid situation. Everything changes rapidly. Plans we make today may not be sufficient for tomorrow. Now, we do know, however, there's one thing that will never change. That's the fact that Jesus is our Lord and Savior. Hebrews 13.8 says Jesus Christ is the same yesterday and today and forever. So no matter what's going on around us, Jesus is there for us. He can be our source of strength and comfort because we know that he has everything in his hands. Nothing that's going on right now is a surprise to him. We come around this table at communion time to remember what he did for us as our Savior. We remember that he willingly went to the cross to die for our sins. He let his body be broken and his blood be spilt so that we could one day have the opportunity to be with him in heaven. He rose from the dead three days later and then ascended into heaven to prepare us a place and to be the same for us yesterday, today, and forever. So wherever you may be watching or listening later, whatever your communion may be today, whatever you could find around the house, We're remembering the same Savior today that we did last month here in the building and that we'll do in the future when we're able to meet again in the building. Let us pray. 
Lord, we thank you for your willingness to come to earth to live an example for us, to show us how we should be, to provide that example and that sacrifice, to let yourself be led to the cross, to be pierced for our transgressions, to suffer and die. We thank you that that's not where the story ends, that you rose again, and that in you we have our chance at salvation and eternity in heaven. It's in your sons and we pray. Amen. It's really weird not telling you to stand up or whatever. So that's the great thing about you at home. You can, you can stand if you want and you can sit if you want. But we're going to continue to worship together as there's more than 10,000 reasons to worship the Lord. But we are going to sing the song, 10,000 Reasons. Bless the Lord, oh my soul, oh my soul, worship His holy name. Sings like never before, oh my soul, I worship Your holy name. The sun comes up, it's a new. It's time to sing your song again Whatever may pass and whatever lies before me Let me be singing when the evening comes Bless the Lord, oh my soul, oh my soul Worship His holy
So this morning, I'm going to talk about talents, giving, why, and all of that, because this is a time for Christ's church, for his disciples to be helping and assisting. And I have three verses or three scriptures, and I want to start With Ephesians 4, 9 through 13. What does he ascended mean except that he also descended to the lower earthly regions? He who descended is the very one who ascended higher than all the heavens in order to fill the whole universe. So Christ himself gave the apostles, the prophets, the evangelists, the pastors and teachers to equip his people for works of service so that the body of Christ may be built up until we all reach unity in the faith and in the knowledge of the Son of God and become mature, attaining to the whole measure of the fullness of Christ. God gave us all talents. It says right there, to equip his people for works of service. Which takes me, to James 2, 14 through 17. What good is it, my brothers and sisters, if someone claims to have faith but has no deeds? Can such faith save them? Suppose a brother or a sister is without clothes and daily food. If one of you says to them, go in peace, keep warm and well fed, but does nothing about their physical needs, what good is it? In the same way, faith by itself if it is not accompanied by action, is dead. We use what we have, our talents, our blessings, because our actions show our faith. As it says right there, faith by itself, if not accompanied by action, is dead. And then lastly, how we do it. Jesus himself Speaking on the Sermon on the Mount, Matthew 6, 1 through 4. Be careful not to practice your righteousness in front of others to be seen by them. If you do, you will have no reward from your Father in heaven. So when you give to the needy, do not announce it with trumpets as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and on the streets to be honored by others. Truly, I tell you, they have received their reward in full. But when you give to the needy, Do not let your left hand know what your right hand is doing, so that your giving may be in secret. Then your Father, who sees what is done in secret, will reward you. We don't help others give to others to be showy. Don't do it for show. Just like Jesus said there, when you give to the needy, do not announce it with trumpets. Do not know, do not let your left hand know what your right hand is doing. This is a time that we're in right now that we can serve others. And I know we do that so often. But there's going to be maybe so many people that maybe their hearts have been hardened hardened in the past, didn't even want to talk about Jesus. But this is our opportunity to show love, to help others. And through that, I'm sure we'll be given the opportunity to share Jesus to some hearts that may be less hardened because of the time we're in. Let's go to God in prayer. Dear God, I do thank you for giving us your son. Father, I thank you that you give each and every one of us talents and blessings to enable us to share with others. Lord, with our families, with our neighbors. Father, with those that we come in contact with. 
Lord, I just pray now that you help us to see the doors that you're opening and to allow us to walk through, to share your love, to help those in need. Father, during this troubling time, Father, I thank you for your son, Jesus. Help us to show that love each and every day and to help others in Jesus' name. Amen. We're going to take a few moments now to be praying. I'll just encourage you. I know there's uh, so much on our hearts and minds and certainly uh, so many people uh, for whom we have concern and compassion. And I would ask you to add the Elkins family. Uh, Liz Elkins passed away uh, just a few days ago. She was the um, older sister of Karen Kaiser and we'll be sharing with her family tomorrow uh, with the funeral setting uh, as we can in these times. So please do, if it just makes it extra difficult uh, for their family. So I'm going to encourage you. I'll give you a few moments to be praying silently. Just take some time there together uh, with whoever you're with and we'll pray and then I'll close. Heavenly Father, again, we come before you and we acknowledge you and uh, I don't know, maybe perhaps this is the, the one portion of a, a normal Sunday morning service uh, of which we've had more. Uh, just time to be still, uh, to be quiet, uh, to wait uh, not only for uh, your will to unfold, but to see how we can uh, respond and react. And we know that you have today and tomorrow in the palm of your hand. We know that you are always able, uh, more than willing. We pray that we would continue to reach out, continue to contact lift up in prayer, uh, check on our neighbors, uh, show concern for our co-workers. And Father, we would pray that we would instill those traits and habits and maintain them even in the future when we go back to being uh, so busy and, and rushing so quickly. And we thank you for these moments uh, to remind us and prepare us. And we thank you for time to gather uh, together uh, to be drawn near to you. Please bless uh, your word and this time that we have today. It's in Jesus' name, amen. <clears throat> in May of 2011, the Hadded kids, Middleton, Maryland, they had a lot on their minds. Uh, not, not, obviously not coronavirus things like us, but according to Ashley Parker, she was writing in the New York Times, May 19th of 2011, the Hadded kids were thinking about their school projects, SATs, the weekend's parties, and their parents who believed that the earth would begin to self-destruct on that Saturday, May 21st. No. And it's, the article said these three teenagers had been struggling to make sense of their shifting world. Said it had started changing two years prior. Their mom, Abby Hadid Carson, left her job as a nurse to, quote, sound the trumpet on mission trips with her husband, Robert. They were handing out tracts. Uh, they stopped working on the house. They stopped saving for college. And the one girl, Grace, was interviewed, and she said, yeah, mom will come in and say, you need to clean up your room. And I'll say, mom, it doesn't matter if the world's going to end. <laughs> Sometimes people's situations change. You know? I went all the way back to the first century, the Apostle Paul is writing a couple of letters to the Thessalonians. The Thessalonians are the believers who lived in the city of Thessalonica. Uh, Thessalonica, uh, it still exists modern day. The name is Thessaloniki. Um, Thessaloniki is the second largest city in Greece. You can see the, the current, the contemporary right on top of the ruins. Uh, they have a metro population of over a million. Uh, but all the way back in the first century, somehow a percentage of the church people had become convinced that the end of the world was near, and their response was, we're going to quit work, we're going to go sit out on the hill, and we're going to wait for Jesus to come get us. So these were Paul's words, and you, I'll give you a moment to look, or you pause if need be, to look to 2 Thessalonians 3, a little bit longer <clears throat> passage than for the screen. But 2 Thessalonians 3, beginning with verse 6. 2 Thessalonians 3, I'll read like 6 to 9 and then 
jump down. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, we command you, brothers, to keep away from every brother who is idle and does not live according to the teaching you received from us. For you yourselves know how you ought to follow our example. We were not idle when we were with you, nor did we eat anyone's food without paying for it. On the contrary, we worked night and day, laboring and toiling, so that we would not be a burden to any of you. Look down in verse 11. We hear that some among you are idle. They are not busy, they are busy bodies. Such people we command and urge in the Lord Jesus Christ to settle down and earn the bread they eat. And as for you, brothers, never tire of doing what is right. You know, like work has always been a thing. Uh, and people have always had umpteen attitudes towards it. And it doesn't matter what is going on in the world around us. And I found this illustrated numerous ways this week. Uh, here's an image that says there are just three things that I hate about work. Waking up, humans, and working. <laughs> That's some people's attitude. And I, I found so many lists. Um, I found ten right attitudes towards work. Five attitudes that are important in the workplace. I found one that said 18 simple ways to keep a positive attitude at work. 18. Uh, must be worthwhile, but it's obviously very difficult. 18. And th this pandemic isolation has impacted work for everybody. Um, Evan Krugel is with KDVR Colorado. They were reporting on Commerce City Bison Rancher Rex Moore. It says, for more than a decade, Rex Moore has been supplying bison burgers, steaks, and roasts to restaurants across Colorado. But with all the dining rooms shutting down and restaurants struggling with orders, Moore has seen business dry up. He said, normally I would have about 45 deliveries a week. Last week I had five, and those were small orders. He said, I lost 80% of my restaurants in one week. I was distraught, and I thought I could lose my business, and I would have to sell the herd. No. I am of a mind that our local Texas Roadhouse staff is likewise impacted. No. Now for me personally, and I, and I think some, a percentage of our church, especially if you're able to do a lot of work on a computer or with a screen or from home, uh, not as largely impact. You might have to ramp up some aspects, uh, back off on others. Um, I, I expect to see the farmers will need to be out working in the fields very soon. You know, different group. If you're Kroger or Walmart or Amazon, Business is booming, and you are hiring. Fortune.com numbers indicated that Kroger was looking for 10000 to add. CVS is willing to fill 50,000 positions. And Amazon, 100000 plus. I just took a screenshot when I looked at the article. They had a link right in there. It said, go here. It said, they'll start at 17. Well, then if you're doctor, nurse, pharmacist, law enforcement, truckers, delivery... Life has obviously changed. You know, and somewhere along that spectrum is everybody else. Uh, military deployments, teachers who can't have contact with their students, elderly who are missing appointments, and we've all been impacted. You know, and here we are in, in this series about the cross of Jesus, and we established last week that Jesus fully expects to die on the cross, and he purposefully sets out towards what he knows is certain death, so, so what about his work? And in a nutshell, Jesus kept right on working. No. And the Apostle John in his gospel took note several times of Jesus and his attitude toward work. John 4, 34. My food, said Jesus, is to do the will of him who sent me and to finish his work. John 5, 17, Jesus said to them, My father is always at his work to this very day, and I too am working. John 17, 4, I have brought you glory on earth by completing the work you gave me to do. Jesus continued his work. Jesus is still teaching right up to the end. If you have time this week, you'll look, you should have time this week to look at Matthew uh, chapter 21 and what follows. And that chapter, that starts with the triumphal entry. So we know this is clear at the end. This is the last week of Jesus' earthly life. And what is he doing? He will be teaching in the temple about prayer. He'll have a few object lessons kind of thrown in there. Um, he will tell stories about 
renters and sons and weddings. Um, he will even take time for a lesson about the IRS. <laughs> Days before his death, and Jesus is willing to discuss paying taxes. Now, and you can consider all the gospel accounts of the Last Supper, Thursday night, now hours before the cross. What is Jesus doing? He is teaching. He is creating the emblems that we just celebrated in communion. He is teaching by example, washing their feet, serving. Jesus keeps at his work right up to the end. Jesus still helps people. Um, Luke's gospel is our main source of information on Jesus, like his last ministry swing through Perea, which is the area to the east on the right of the Jordan, and all the various efforts and aspects, um, raising Lazarus from the dead, healing the ten lepers. He will take time to discuss with a rich young ruler. Um, he always was available to the little kids, always willing to help. Well, healing blind men in Jericho. By the time you get to Matthew 20, you know, it's, it's getting later and later and later in the game, and Jesus is heading to Jerusalem for what he knows is the last time, and he's still he's stopping to help people. Next on the record is going to Zacchaeus' house for lunch. Family's never going to be the same. On the cross, even on the cross, here is Jesus essentially working, making sure that his mother is cared for, provided, um, extending grace, having a session with the thief on the cross next to him. That's, a, that's kind of a simple question, even in the midst of all this. H have I used e either recent events or, I don't know, some various flimsy reasons as an excuse to not work? You know, Jesus is literally on his way to his execution. He's still doing his job. You know? And people notice. People will notice when believers set the example. I'll put an image if you have the ability to, to see. I don't know if you know who this man is. If you've seen his picture or heard his story, uh, the caption that I read said, this is Father Giuseppe Berardelli, 72-year-old priest who gave the respirator that his congregation had purchased for him, gave that ventilator, that breathing apparatus, to a younger patient he did not know who he thought needed it worse than he did. And then he later died from the coronavirus. And people noticed. Well, what are people noticing about me, my work, my effort, lack thereof? Even now, here we are, we're, we're working our way, working our way through this pandemic. Uh, this, this is new territory. How do you navigate that? You know, different categories of people. Um, if in your work, if you are hurting, first group, ask for help. As a church, we've already been able to, to help a few. Uh, we are putting funds in place and, and system to be able to help more. You should have that information in an email uh, in your box. Uh, contact me if you need that update. 1 Corinthians 12, 26. If one part of the church body suffers, every part suffers with it. No. I, I didn't even run this by my family, but I'm confident in this current climate, we halls, Derek and Denise and I, we would have no problem helping Marilyn. Uh, that's a girl that generally serves us at our favorite Skyline restaurant. We know she has four little kids. You know, her being out of work is certainly not her fault. Mm -hmm. Or if you remember Mr. Moore, Rex Moore, the bison rancher, and we left the story, him thinking he was maybe going to have to sell the herd. The article goes on to say that Moore posted a desperate plea on social media asking for help. He says, I was amazed at the response. Through tears, he said, within an hour, it was shared a thousand times. Within five hours, 12,000. As of the later morning, 28,000 shares. His phone had been ringing off the hook with Coloradans looking to save his business. He said, I'm overwhelmed. The people that want to help. People are calling. They're saying, I have $100. I want to buy some meat. He said, I had, I had a large freezer and cooler full of meat that had nowhere to go, and now it's all going to be gone. He said, I've had over 2,000 orders since Monday, took 1,000 in a single day. That's triple a monthly restaurant business. He had to take down the post because he couldn't keep up with the demand. And his advice to others, don't be afraid to ask for help. A church family that I know is willing. We may not be able to order 1,000 pounds of bison meat, but we're willing. Able. Now, this is not the time to be proud nor stupid. You know, we know it's not your fault. If you need help, ask. 
Uh, second group, if you're, if you're trying to adjust to work as it is now, uh, th- this is my category today. I am still working. I am still being paid. I appreciate that. I'm still doing pretty much everything I would normally do. I just do it from home, and I just snapped a picture for you so you could see. I, literally, I just got up as I was typing this, took a picture, sat back down, wrote the next line. That's, that's what I do. That's where I work. And I think that's a fair percentage of, of people that I know. And, the, and man, the information's out there. The articles are flowing, and, and the resources and the items, everybody's saying, this is what you need. If you're going to work from home, this is what... And I was going to read the list, and then I was going to add some of my own thoughts at the end, but then I realized that my thoughts were the same as the list. Uh, so m- most, of, most of the information online, it's not this anymore. I don't know if you see the, the pictures. It, it used to be this. You know, I work from home, and it was my coworkers with the cats and sweatpants and can't talk. And that's what people used to think when you said, I work from home. You know? That's not that now. I think rather that I found another image that I thought was uh, a better start you know, of, of how a lot of us can operate. And I, I encourage you, if, if you have that capability, if you're called to work from home, can you maintain, can we maintain as much consistency as possible? Um, start and stop times if, if work allows. You know, and I, everybody knows ministry has like an aspect of 24-7, but for the office stuff, I, you, you saw my table, I try to be sitting at the table by 9 o'clock, take an hour for lunch at noon, Work till five as best I can. I, you know, the one day it was super sunny. I did call some people outside, you know. But that that table, we keep that table. You saw it. I have one end of the table where I work, and the other end where we eat or play a game or whatever. <laughs> I don't, I don't know how you do. You might laugh at this, but I, when I work, I put on my shoes. <laughs> you know, when I'm at home, I don't have my shoes on. But when I go into work, I put on my shoes, and then I unplug the cord from the laptop when work is over, and I put it under the table. I take, you're going, I take my day timer back, like I have it on the dining room table, and it's there, and then when work is over, I take it back to the living room, which is like three feet away, where it normally sits when I come home from work, as consistent as I can. Uh, the one change that I have made is I do now, I use my former, you know, the time that I used to spend in commuting uh, to watch more TV, so that, that gives me like three minutes a day, you know, <laughs> yeah, I mean, you, you might have... You might have more, you know, that, that's a freebie, you know, that's a, it's a new, use it however, but otherwise, as consistent as possible, you know? and personally, I, I work best when I watch less, um, especially the news, you know, not getting consumed by the media, it is what it is, I, I have to do what I have to do, if you want, if you want a verse to tape on your monitor, your home office, Matthew six thirty four. therefore, do not worry about tomorrow, For tomorrow will worry about itself. Each day has enough trouble of its own. And if you're like me, each day has enough work to do. And I I just found this to be true this week. When I work more normally, I worry less. Some might be in the group where work kind of is still going on as normal. Um, I would, I think Denise would say that's workload hasn't really increased or decreased a whole lot. I still have to show up and do work every day. You know, and I put there for that group. Try to be a light. Try to be an encouragement. You know, can I be an example? It's, it's, I think it's easy to fall into, this is just another day. You know, this is just another day when everybody's deciding what is or isn't essential. Really? You, know, you really need to do that today? You, know, you need to come in here today? And, and you have to remember, for some of these people, for them, it's not just another day. And they might be coming to your store or your office or your restaurant or whatever because they feel like that's the one thing that they can still control. You know, they're, they're not getting paid anymore. Th- this is different for them. I, li- I like how one of the last things that Denise does when she goes out the door is say, Alexa, tell me a joke. <laughs> and, and, like, and sometimes she says, tell me another one, because that one wasn't any good. You know? <laughs> but then when she gets to work, the very first thing that happens is, is one of the coworkers will say, tell me the joke. You know, what was the joke today? Just, just trying to keep things as normal and consistent as possible. If you are, there's a group, the fourth group, if you're overworked, well, for some people this has just consumed them. Uh, all the medical forces, first responders, law enforcement, pharmaceutical, drivers, delivery, just business just ramped up. You're just consumed. You know, and all I could think was read when you can and rest. As, stay, stay grounded in the word. Stay fueled in your spirit. If you're only going to get five or ten minutes to digest information. I say just leave your media unplugged 
and open your Bible. You know, I know that's the best reading any of us can do before you fall asleep. The Word of God. I don't, I don't have time to waste reading all the rest. You know? And I, I don't know if maybe this section kind of goes with, with the families of the people who are especially burdened. Let them sleep. You know, especially if, if they come home and I, you know, they don't have very much time and everybody wants to catch up and do all this stuff, we might have to be mindful. They're, they're going to need to rest. And I, and I think it probably radiates out to all of us, whether you're particularly overburdened, but just for every, all four of the above, we need to allow for emotion. You know, the more this thing lengthens, patience will wear thin. Uh, attitudes will explode. Um, people who don't normally react will be testy, you know. And I try, I try every time I write something for it, but I try to guard and guide every word, but there is the potential for any of us to blow up regretfully, you know. Mercy and grace. And you're going to say, well, they're not being themselves. I know, none of us are, are ourselves. This is not normal for, for any of us. What, what I would not give right now for it to be normal where I look down and so-and-so's sleeping in the pew like he normally does. You know, um, then do not take a picture of somebody sleeping on the couch and share it. I don't want to see it. You're just going to make them mad. Um, we're all having a tough time. You know? and, I, and I thought, you know, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter your employment, the impact, uh, pandemic, no. Um, it is or it isn't uh, that time of year or that season or you're retired or a student or winter, spring, you know, any, any time, any setting, there are aspects of work that all of us who are Christians can, can be striving towards regardless. Um, for example, improving my attitude. You know, if I, if I want to be an example, a light for God in dire straits, I've got to have a good attitude. found a couple of illustrations. Uh, this one says a bad attitude is like a flat tire. You don't go anywhere until you change it. And this one just said, stay away from negative people. They have a problem for every solution. <laughs> um, some of work is just work. Um, it is not fun. It is not easy. I just got to stick to my job. Not be lazy. You know? and, and, this, and obviously that part doesn't readily apply to some now. We just talked about all the people that are working 24-7. But, but some of us, and I'd, and I'd save the list. Again, there's a million lists out there. Um, Ten ways to respond to lazy coworkers. The top five types of lazy employees. And somebody's going to say, oh, there's more than five. Um, I just held those in September. We're going to have a sermon series about Daniel from the Old Testament when Daniel worked day by day in a very pagan setting. How do you do it? What kind of a worker? So we'll save those, those for September. And let me know if you need that earlier. You know, but suffice it to say, people, people know, man, if you, if you have a lazy attitude or a poor work ethic, I can't say with 100% certainty that John Mark was being lazy, but Paul had some bone to pick with him over his work or lack thereof. This is Acts 15, 38. But Paul did not think it wise to take him because he had deserted them in Pamphylia and had not continued with them in the work. And Paul took note of that, and it impacted their relationship. On the other side of the coin, when people were working diligently, Paul was always in line to mention that these, these encouraging words for the women in Romans 16, first verse 6, greet Mary, who worked very hard for you. Verse 12, greet Tryphena and Tryphosa, they have to be twins. Um, those women who worked hard in the Lord. And I'm, I'm just, I'll admit, I laughed, I giggled to myself when I started seeing all the sites for church leaders that were offering, quote, 10 free offering talks. How to talk about money. And I, I thought, well, first of all, we call them meditations. Um, secondly, if you'd been doing them in the past, you wouldn't have to learn how to do it now. You know, and they said, click on this link, you get free resources. And so I checked, just see what they're saying, and it wasn't free. You know, sign up and give all your information. I'm like, no, you're just trying to drum up business. You know, and I just kind of want to say for anybody, you might have even looked today and said, why do we do that? Why would we talk about offering every Sunday? This is why. It, yeah, it's tough to come up with those words. It is work to do that week after week. But us not being lazy in the easy times has led to the funds that we have available to share with people today. You know, 
The most frequent question I've gotten from this congregation this week is, how can we give? You know, where do we send it? You know, and, and maybe that's one thing, that one of the many things this pandemic is refining for all of us. Who's, who's willing to work? How diligently? Who would rather come up with an excuse to complain or blame? You know, can I improve my attitude? Can I, I, can I improve my home? Can I, can I, home improvement. Uh, can you work on that? And it, it could very literally be physical projects, um, cleaning. <laughs> Do you really say, oh, I don't have time now? Can't really say that. I talked to one of the retired ladies in the congregation. She said, man, our house is even cleaner now than it's ever been. And we've, we've gotten rid of, it's as empty of stuff as it's ever been. And I bet the trash collector's going, yeah, tell us about it. You know, um, a goodwill. I don't know what they must be facing in the future. You know. Can, can we do some of that stuff? Some of the things around the house that we have been putting off. Uh, we, uh, for the church, house cleaning, we've been able to give the sermon page of the website um, a facelift, you know, try to kind of make it more visual uh, navigation. Those types of things are a good use of extra time. You know? And beyond the, like the nuts and bolts or the walls and the floors, you know, marriage, um, if you have that blessing, relationships, parent, child, can we devote some time to, to just being together? Just listening to each other. Maybe then probably is a good time to look at the, the money aspect. Do we need to make some changes? Whether you're just talking about now or for long term. You know, and I'm, I'm trying desperately to keep any of like the, the Dave Ramsey um, emergency fund commentary. I'm trying to keep that for November because we said, you know, we, we talk about money in the fall and we don't hit you every week on that. But I'm thinking, man, is that still going to be as forceful in November as it would be today? You know? Man, what if we did already have three months saved up? You know, would today be any different? Yeah, savings work. You know, and then what's done is done. But would it be worth it now? You know, and I don't know how many. I sent out a link in one of the daily columns where I had a link to Ken Kington. Um, I don't know if you got a chance to look at it. I, I'm of a mind that this man clearly loves his wife, and their relationship provides all kinds of material for his routines. And, and I would encourage you, and it's, you can watch it with the kids and stuff, but just this bit there he has, my lady, I've heard your cry, and it's the rat roast beast or some critter in the bathroom, you know, and, and just how that unfolds. You know, just spending time together. And... For if I'm talking to the students or, or the young people and you are cooped up at home and maybe you're not really looking forward to another week of mom and dad 24-7, uh, this is tough on all of us. You know? So give them some grace. They have the same issues you do about trying to get work done, all the social things that have been canceled, worrying about our friends and relationships. And on top of that, on top of your stuff, they also have the burden of providing for the household, making sure that we can get the food and keep the utilities on and nobody's getting sick. And you, you really, you just, you don't know how hard parenting is until you're parenting. You know? So cut the folks some slack. Uh, there, there's no manual on raising kids in a pandemic setting, but they're doing their best. Pray for them. All of, all of us relying on the Lord, I didn't think there was any better place to conclude this idea of working in the midst of struggle. I can be working on my relationship with Jesus no matter what. You read these gospel accounts, it's going to be very clear that Jesus kept at his job. He was working through the most trying days. And as he's doing that, he's always grounded in, he's always rooted in, he's connected, drawing closer to his father. That spiritual divine relationship. He is sweating like drops of blood in the garden. And he's agonizing over the days ahead, but he's doing that with whom? With his dad. And he's praying and talking and being strengthened. Uh, maybe I can work on memorizing some different verses. Maybe I can, and I'll pray for three people and I'll tell them, I'll send them a note. I prayed for you this week. I appreciate the, the young adults class. They're working on sharing their class online. Oh, I don't, I really don't think there's a real excuse for many of us this week to say, well, I didn't have time for devotions this week. You know, if you want to do something constructive, work on getting to know Jesus better. You know, that, that's beneficial and worthwhile in any climate. Jesus endured, he conquered the cross for our sakes. He offers salvation 
to any of us, all of us willingly, and a contributing factor to the availability of salvation was Jesus and his willingness to do the work that needed to be done, regardless. Let's pray and we'll close. Heavenly Father, we are grateful for your presence and your power, uh, your consistency, and your sacrifice. And we pray that we would be numbered among those this week that would be not only reliant on you uh, and looking to you, but those that are working as you worked, sharing your truth and our goods. Father, we would pray, we would ask that you would keep us strong and safe, um, healthy and content. Father, we pray that we would be able to work out of the overflow of your blessings and your grace. And we pray that each of us would be able to draw nearer to you today and tomorrow and the week ahead. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. And again, we will continue to just try to keep the service as consistent as we possibly can. I understand you're not physically in the room, but uh, we are aware, and as far as I know, if everything's still working and going online, you could post a comment right now about this invitation and say, I will be there in 10 minutes. I will be there in 20. Uh, meet me there at 2 o'clock. I don't care. You know, wh whatever you need to decide today. But let's go ahead and we'll sing our invitation to close. Appreciate your being willing to share this time with us, and we will be praying for you, thinking of you in the week ahead. As far as I'm aware, it'll probably be, um, as much as we know now, similar this week to the way it was last week. Uh, church leaders continue to try to be in contact with the church families and also with one another. We have ways that we can meet and share and discuss together, so we'll try to keep doing the, the same as best we can this week, and again, probably send something out maybe later in the week if there are any 
updates or changes. And if you do have any questions, uh, go ahead and ask. You're probably not the only individual or family that has that question or concern. So go ahead and share those, and we'll um, share them with others as best we can. Is there anything either of you on thinking of? Mark, would you be willing to say Sure. Questions? Let's pray. <clears throat> Father, I thank you for the, this opportunity we've had this morning uh, to just gather together uh, in our homes, on the couch, with our loved ones, and Father, to worship you. Father, I just pray that you will uh, guide and direct this week. Uh, just help us to just continue to show your love. Father, to stay grounded in your word. And to speak with you each and every day in prayer and in our devotions. Father, thank you that we are, that we serve a risen Savior. And we just give you glory this morning in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. We'll close together with I'll Fly Away. <clears throat> Some bad morning when this life is over. Hallelujah, bye and bye.